But then if we get to strategy, like that's where I shine. I can talk nerdy with the best of them. And one of the things that I'm always evaluating is my return on investment. And the main investment that I'm looking at, especially while my children are young, is time. This community, Pete, I attend these PV3s. Thank you for letting me share the stage with you today and be a part of your community. Hey, let me ask you a question. Who else would you like for me to go backstage with? Who would you love to see? Jenna, Jenna, freaking phenomenal day. Who else would you love me to go backstage with? Trent Shelton, Brian Scott, Tim Tebow, Daniel Sanchez, Dean Graziosi, Brooke Castillo, Ed Milet, Jasmine Starr, Brendan, we already did Stormy, Bishop T.D. Jakes, Grant Cardone. I haven't even done Grant. Those who acquire wisdom love themselves. And those who go after understanding will have abundance. So there's the differentiation of wisdom and understanding is what I talked about last week. But today, one of the ways that I get things to be understood better is not just by absorbing the knowledge, but then by teaching the knowledge. You want something to stick and land for you? Go and actually teach it to somebody because you're going to begin to understand it. And so I got the chance last night to be in a dinner with John Maxwell and got to play golf and spend a lot of quality time within the last few days. He's, he's definitely one of my heroes. And he talked about the markings of a movement. He talked about the markings of a movement. I think many of you are supposed to be able, are supposed to be creating movements in this world, in your business but also in your homes. And he just talked about the mar markings of a movement and too many people think that the movement is going to wait on them. But the reason why the word move is in the word movement is it's con consistently gonna move. And so if you are not ready to catch it, somebody else will catch it. And so as he talked about that, he just talked about a few things that were so profound for me. And I just want to share a few of those with you today before we get to our guest. He just said, the markings of a movement is that there is a felt need. It actually begins with the problem. Every movement and miracle begins with the pro problem. And so he, he talked about that. The second thing he talked about the markings of a movement is a vision, the importance of visionary leadership. You see something before other people see it. You see something before other people see it. The third thing he said about the, mar the markings of a movement is that people buy into it. People buy into it. And as he began to talk about it, he said, a movement always creates life-changing results. A movement creates life-changing results results. And so I just sat there and I began to think about, man, I want to create a movement. I want to create a movement. Yes. In my business, but I want to also create a movement in my home that outlives me like legacy that outlives me in my home. And one of the people that I think about that to me um, has become a dear friend and I can't, I'm, I want to, I'm going to bring our guest up here, but I love this person because like she is committed to getting life-changing results. She gets life-changing results in her marriage. She gets it with her kids. She gets it in her business. She really, uh, it's just unbelievable the things that she does, does. And I didn't get introduced to her from like another colleague in this world. I got introduced to her from my wife. My wife's introduced me to a couple of people, Bob Goff, Jenna Kutcher, and maybe one other person. And I saw the way that my wife was being impacted by Jenna. And so I started to do a little bit of due diligence on her. And I'm like, man, I love what she has to say. I love who she is. I love what she stands for. And then our friendship began to develop. And I got to also see that she is unbelievable in business. She's unbelievable in business. And today, what we talk Talk about quite often here is the power of stages. I call it stages. Other people call it other things, but I call it stages. And I've told you that there are two major types of stages. There's other people's stages, and then there's your own stages. And today, we are going to focus in the bucket of your own stages, because Jenna has become a master at creating her own stages. 
She's become a master at creating her own stages and stages, check this out, that allow her to live the life that she desires and that God has called her to live without compromising anything in her life that's important. That one day she doesn't want to have these regrets that she sold her soul, but, you know, but gained, you know, gained the world and lost the soul. Like she is one of those people that has deep convictions about what matters, what's important, but what I've seen her be able to do is master four stages in these, in these buckets. And so I'm going to talk to you about those four stages, but we're going to talk to you about one of them specifically that she's very excited about. And so I'm so stoked. Like I, like I've said to a few people, she is one of my favorite people on the planet. I love her husband that they become dear friends to Kim and I, we've traveled together, we've vacationed together um, and literally love her to death. And so guys, backstage on Twitter, on Instagram, in Zoom, would you guys give so much love and warmth and appreciation to my good friend, Jenna Kutcher. Will you drop her some love in the notes? Come on, give her some love. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, everybody. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Jenna, what's up? How are you? Hi. Thanks for having me. I just need to listen to you talk about how great I am every day. That's a great way to wake up and move. Thank you. Yeah, completely mean it from the bottom of my heart. And if Kim were here, she would say the same thing. So yeah. How are you? I'm great. I am in Canada and it's so funny. We're talking about stages because this is the only uh, speaking thing I'm doing this year outside of my own stages. And so I'm at a small women's conference with my mom. My mom's in the other room and we trekked out to Alberta and it's beautiful and cold. And so I'm excited, but I'm excited to talk about why this is rare for me and the other path that I think is way more accessible for a lot of your audience. So I'm stoked to dive in. Yeah, so I wanna start because we got the chance, the first time I met Jenna, Jenna is a, a baller. Like any, any type of <laughs> online competition or these online launches that you see in this world, like Tony Robbins or anybody who does online launches, everybody knows like Jenna is the OG. She is the greatest at it. And so I actually met her at a, at a Tony Robbins event. Like 10 of us got invited to come to this thing and I met her and we hit it off and I got to know a lot just about her uh, personally, but also about her business. And Jenna, the thing that blew me away is you really live in this bucket of what I call your own stages. And yeah. I feel like there's, there's several that you do good. And we're going to talk about four for a quick minute, but the four that I saw you do so well yeah. are all in the digital bucket. And I'm assuming I'm assuming that's because that allows you to do it from home. I'm going to talk about those four in a minute, yeah. but what has you say, I'm going to digital and I'm going to master these four things. I'll come to the four things, but what has you live in that bucket in that domain? Yeah. So a little bit about my story is I grew up in small town, Minnesota. We still live in Minnesota. And so we don't live in LA or New York. We've never had access in the way that a lot of my friends in this world do. So I just created my own access. And long before the world shut down and everyone scooted to Zoom, that was the only way I knew how to do things. And so I used to be a wedding photographer, which had me away from home every single weekend. And one year we decided we wanted to expand our family. And after a three-year journey to hit that final moment of meeting our first daughter, I had this realization that I never wanted to build something that I had to physically show up for because my job as a wedding photographer required me to show up in order to get paid. And there were seasons that we went through where I simply just couldn't show up and it scared me. And so during those waiting seasons, I really worked to build something that could work while I rested that wouldn't shut down if I didn't show up. And so the digital space was exactly that for me. And to this day, I'm still a huge homebody. I love being home when I'm with my children. I define success as being able to be there when my kids wake up and be there to put them to bed at night. And so it's just created this space that gives me that freedom because time is my currency. And that's how I live in my life right now. Yeah. And guys lives that way. Like that's who she is behind the curtain. A lot of people talk about that front curtain and then you look 
and there's a massive mess in there, yeah. like just a mess, like pay attention to somebody who behind the curtain is actually walking out what they talk about front stage. And she's one of those. So I'm going to, because we've never done this, we're going to, I'm going to tell you four and I could tell you probably seven, but there's four that Jenna is really great at. Number one is she's mastered Pinterest. Yes. Number two, she's mastered Instagram. Just go pay attention to it. Number three, she's mastered email list. To me, to me, I'm just going to say this, and Jenna might disagree, but to me, maybe the most powerful stage because you actually control the asset. Like if, if, if Instagram changes something, like you don't have any control, but email list is one of my favorites that I've learned from her and a few of our friends. And number four, one of the biggest for her is podcasting all four digital stages. I want to focus on one and maybe I can twist your arm to come back for like a really big time to talk about some of these others. Yeah. But before we drill into one of those, tell us why you love all four of these for people who are listening today. Like what's the pros to those four that I just talked about of how they can really use those platforms, or as I call them, digital stages to yeah. get their message out, to build their business, to reach more people. Tell us just the highlights of why you love those. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting, Pete, because I teach on all of these different areas and each on their own is incredibly powerful, but the real power comes when you create systems where they all work together, right? It's all a part of a bigger system. And for me, I am like a shark on shark tank. It usually surprises people. I think Pete, you know, you met me and we like connected on heart level and family and faith and all these different things. But then if we get to strategy, like that's where I shine. Like I can, I can talk nerdy with the best of them. And one of the things that I'm always evaluating is my return on investment. And the main investment that I'm looking at, especially while my children are young is time. And if mm. I can't tie my efforts to real measurable results, it's not worth it to me. Like it's just not worth it. And so when I look at each of these platforms, I've created systems like Pinterest, where we spend under an hour on our strategy. And I actually outsource that hour and we get millions of views every single month. And it's the number one organic traffic driver to our website. I look at Instagram and we've created a system that allows us to collect email addresses. So get people off of Instagram and onto our email list and drive real engagement and conversations that can be measured in more results than just likes and comments. And then we talk about email list and I think the email list is king. And I think that's something you and I connect on. Like we're working on building that, but your email list gives you the greatest ROI. It gives you the ability to give people real experience without worrying about the algorithm robbing them. That is your number one asset. It's the number one place that you can sell and make results. And then lastly, the podcast, that is a place where you can make an impact, serve people for free, get them to know you, like you, and trust you, and build up this beautiful resource library where people really look to you as a true mentor and a leader in the space that you're in, and that results in massive results as well. So let's go into that one, guys. Like, I'm just curious, just out of, out of curiosity, we're going to dive into podcasting today because it's something that I've launched this year and I've been telling myself... You might not know this, but this show just gets reproduced in a podcast, but I do it in a live version. I don't talk about that every week, but this has become a podcast and my archive library of Jenna and John Gordon and Amy Porterfield and Erwin McManus and Grant Cardone and me getting to interview them and me giving nuggets and even some of the nuggets I've given, I forgot that I gave like, there's this beautiful thing. And so the reason I want to start there, Jenna, is because I'm all in there. Like that is, people think this is a live show. This is a podcast. This yeah. is what it is. We've reproduced it as backstage with PV3 as a podcast. So I want to live there. So guys, yeah. we're going to live there, but where would you like, may, maybe we'll come back in a couple of months and do what, which of those sound most appealing to you? Pinterest, Instagram, email, Obviously, podcast is going to be number one today, but put, put that in the chat. I want to see what email, email, IG, email, email, Love all it. three. Yeah, there I'll we go. I'll come back as many times as you'll have me, Pete. Come, come on. <laughs> 
So uh, let, let's dive into podcasts. Like, yeah, let's I've just been it. like, I don't know why I've resisted it for so long, but I'm like really excited about it. Yeah. Let's start with why you love your podcast. Kind of tell us your, just tell us your podcast story or your podcast testimony a little yeah. bit. So I know you recently had Amy Porterfield on backstage with PV3. I was watching Amy Porterfield is now my best friend. But for many years, she did not know I existed. How many of you have online mentors that have no idea you exist and they are like speaking into your lives? And uh, for years and years, I listened to Amy Porterfield. And the embarrassing part of the story is that I listened to her while I was in the shower. And this is like pre MP3 speakers. So I would take a, a cup, stick my phone in it to make the sound amplified, and I'd take a shower and listen to Amy. And one day Amy was telling this story about how she was building out this new offer. And if I could have reached out of the shower and grabbed my credit card and said, take my money, I would have done it. And I had this real aha moment of like, she had been speaking into my life every single week, giving me free value, giving me insight and information. I felt like I knew her through and through, and she didn't even know who I was. And I really recognized the power of podcasting that she had been this mentor that felt like a business coach for me. And she was simply sitting down and recording something that was reaching the masses every single week. And so in that same shower, I reached my arm out, voice memoed my one virtual assistant at the time and said, Hey, it's the wedding off season. I was a photographer at the time. And I said, I think I'm going to do an experiment. I think I'm going to launch a podcast and I'm going to launch it in 30 days. And my assistant was like, wait a minute, we just got through the thick of the wedding season. I thought we were going to be relaxing. And I was like, there's no time to relax. We're going to start a podcast. And it was beautiful because that very day I posted online, I said, I'm going to start a podcast. I didn't say, I think I'm going to, or maybe I will. I said, I'm going to start a podcast. It's coming soon. And I looked at it as an experiment. And I think that this is something that not enough people do is today's era, we want things to be a success or we consider them a failure. We're not willing to try things. We're not willing to be a beginner. We're not willing to show up and say, I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to do it anyways. And so I figured out how to launch a podcast. And the best part is I recorded my first 10 episodes in my parked car, in my garage with nothing more than iPhone headphones. And so I figured out this way to simply start imperfectly. Imperfect action makes things happen. And it has grown into the number one marketing podcast in the country. We have over a hundred million downloads. We have over 700 episodes and it's just been the most incredible asset in my business that started in a very humble, humble way. Wow. I've got goosebumps. Like uh, guys, she like, really like, let's back up. I want to make sure you heard what she said. Number one marketing podcast, hundred million downloads, downloads, meaning there's people in the shower like her. There's people running. There's people in the bathroom. There's people in like on an airplane right now, as I'm saying this, listening to Jenna right now, plus 700 episodes of content that is probably powerful. So Man, that's that's amazing. Jenna, did you start podcasting before you got serious with other things or was was like oh, this yeah. one of the very first things that you started? Yeah. So, most people don't know this about me, but as I said, at the time I was a wedding photographer. That was the only thing I was doing, the only way I was making money. And so launching into the podcast really opened me up to this digital online space that you now see me in everywhere. And so it opened up conversations. It gave me opportunities to create connections. It put me in rooms with other people. And so it was this beautiful experiment. And what I love about it and what I would challenge you, if you have even a tiny inkling on your heart of like, maybe I should start a podcast is do 10 episodes. Just say, I'm going to do season one of whatever you want to call your show, season one, 10 episodes, see what happens. It, there is so much power that gets unlocked and also to keep power in your voice. There's, there's this thing, you know, I, I had this realization the other day when I was talking to one of our friends, Colin Boyd, and we were talking and he was like, tell me about your first episode. He's like, I went all the way back and listened to it. And, and I started laughing and I said, you know, Colin, for many years, I told myself that I recorded it in the front seat of my car because I didn't want my dogs to bark. 
But in reality, if I were really being honest, I was afraid of the person who loves me the most in the world. You know him, my husband, Drew, hearing me speak. I was embarrassed of who am I to do this? Who am I to think I have something to say? Who am I to bring my voice out into the world? And so I sat in my car in the, my cold garage with pillows on the dashboard to try to muffle the sound. And I think so many of us feel that way. So many of us have ourselves on mute, not just on Zoom, but in real life. And so I think that it's a beautiful opportunity to honor your voice and your story, even when your voice is shaky or you feel scared. Hmm, it's so good. Like one of the things that's been so beautiful for me, and you know my wife so well, is this last time we had an event in, in California. It was the first time she had ever physically spoken on a stage and she had such a powerful voice, yeah. but it didn't start there. It started by being on some podcasts that were like so moving for other, specifically she was on women's podcast, but she didn't, she felt less pressure there. She felt like yeah. I don't have to be like all ready and it's conversational and I don't have to have this like keynote talk and and I, I, I feel like a keynote's important, but sometimes there's progressional steps that get you to the point. And for my wife, yep. it started with her getting comfortable with podcasting and then us shooting episodes together. And she's like, I like this and yes. no pressure of any audience or any crowd or anything. And so let me ask you this, because I believe, I believe everybody listening to this should take on a challenge of doing what Jenna did, which is launching a podcast in the next 30 days. I'm curious with our live show folks, how many of you have a podcast say yes or no? Yes or no today that people are downloading? Yes or no? Will you drop that in the chat for me and make sure I can see that chat team? But I want to see like who's who has one. Jenna, what are the like benefits? Okay, cool. Downloads, number one. Yeah. But like, what are the benefits? Because it's one thing to be like, cool, this is awesome. But what has that actually translated into for you in like your life and your business? Yeah. So I think the first one is credibility. So we all know that like in order to sell something, people have to know, like, and trust you. And we have gotten kind of over the like curated snapshot and caption days, right? You can only say so much with a picture and a caption. And so I feel like your podcast gives you the chance to tell the story behind the story. And I feel like that is so powerful. You really do get to show up. Now you already referenced this and I love this, Pete, but you were talking about how podcasting puts the consumer in control. And I feel like this is so important in a day that we are constantly bombarded by media and marketing and promotions is that podcasting lets the consumer choose when and where they're tuning in. And that means that they are inviting you into a really sacred space of their life. Like, as you said, like people are listening while they're washing dishes or while they're commuting or while they're bringing their kids to school. There are so many kids that know my like intro to my podcast. And I just think that that's so powerful because there, have you ever had this Pete where like you listen to something really powerful and you can literally remember exactly where you were when you heard it. Like there's power in that intersection of like someone's life and your voice beyond that. If we're talking about like return on investment in terms of actual results in the business, your podcast can be a really amazing way to grow your email list. So Pete, as you are getting your feet wet, I want to challenge you to continue to invite people off of the podcast and onto your email list so that you can serve them further. So having those extra opportunities where you, you can say, you know, if you really like this, I have this free resource or I have this training or I have this extra bonus and getting again, people off off of a platform that you can't necessarily control, but you can serve through and onto a place where you can control. And then lastly, there are so many creative ways that you can monetize a podcast um, from having sponsors to doing affiliate partnerships, to getting people onto your email list and selling your products to outwardly selling your products. There are so many different ways you can monetize your show. 
And you can be really strategic and thoughtful with what that looks like. And so now I would say like my podcast is probably the number one thing I'm known for. Uh, it's a significant revenue generator in my business. And it's also the best way that I can get connected to the people I want to get connected to because I have an opportunity for them. That's exciting, right? I have a platform for them to be center stage, for them to feel special, for them to share their story. And so it gives you this opportunity to approach your heroes, your mentors, those people you would die to be in a room with and say, I have this thing. And I love you. And I want to give you a place to share your story and do it justice. Would you do that with me? Come on my show. And so there's just so many amazing things about it. It's like killing all of these birds with one stone. Like I, yeah. I just got an aha, kind of a download. And Jenna always beats all of the people in any launch that she does. Any launch. She's always number one, whether it's Dean and Tony or Amy Porterfield. I actually believe there's probably a trust factor from this podcast of people are like, if Jenna says it's good, like it's good. And yeah. probably the fact that you're building trust, you're in people's ear on a day-to-day -day basis, you're collecting emails, you could talk about products and services. Yeah. You can get sponsors. Like I, there's, I have a good friend who has Tommy John's, which is like an yeah. underwear brand. He's like, I love sponsoring podcasts because it blows up my brand and he yeah. pays big bucks to go sponsor podcasts. And I'm like, wow. So all of these perks and benefits, why don't more people do it? Like, is it oversaturated or like, why are people not doing it? Like, I'm trying to even ask myself the question. I told myself like four years ago, I was going to do one. And yeah. finally I've made a commitment to doing it. I'm doing it live because I love doing the live component. Cause it brings me to life to be with you and guests, yeah. but, and we just repurpose it and, and, and put it on. But I'm, I don't know why I resisted or why so many people resist. What, what would you say is the reason for that? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'll just tell you the reasons why I resisted even in my 30 day sprint and maybe you can relate. So number one, I am terrified of technology. I am so tech illiterate that any like software, any cords that need to go into my computer, it freaks me out. Like I, I cannot, I cannot. So the technology freaks me out, which is exactly why I launched my show with iPhone headphones that I know how to plug in. Right. Um, and so that's one thing is that the technology and kind of figuring out like, well, how do I record it? And then, and then what happens once it's recorded and what, what does that even look like? Right. The second thing is, is that it's very intimidating because you feel like you must make a lot of important decisions right at the very beginning. So at the very beginning, I'm like, what am I going to call it? How many days a week is it going to go out? What do I say at the beginning? What do I say at the ending? I want it to be cohesive. I want it to be perfect. I want it to sound the same. And I had all these fears around like, what is the sign off going to be? And I can't change my mind. And you know, what's so interesting to me, Pete, is like all of those decisions at the very beginning, every single thing that I had to decide six years ago has now changed. It's evolved. It's pivoted over time. None of that mattered. I just had to simply start. But I think there is this, this layer of overwhelm of like, I've got to make these important decisions and I've got to make the right decisions. So I'm just not going to make any decisions because per perfection leads to procrastination. And that's where most of us are sitting. And then the last thing is, is that what's very funny is my brother gave me a microphone years ago and he was like, Jen, I really think you should start a podcast. And I was like, dude, I'm going to run out of things to say five episodes in. And here we are 738 episodes and I can't shut up. And so he <laughs> knew something I didn't know, but there was this deep fear of like, I've got enough content. I've got enough brain power for maybe three episodes and then it's going down. And one thing I didn't bring up that I think is so important, Pete, is that if you were to look at my career over the last decade, I have been, and I say this uh, in a humble way, but I have been very successful in pivoting into multiple spaces and into multiple different avenues. So for example, I have a podcast, I have a book, I have online courses, I do speaking, I do influencer relationships. I have a lot of different things um, that I do. And I truly believe that my podcast has invited people on the journey with me so that they are bought in long before the pivot happens. I don't feel stuck in any way because I feel like if I went on my podcast today and said like, 
hey guys, I'm thinking about starting a fashion line and I don't know how to do it, but I know here's exactly what I want. And I, and I talk about this and I invite my listeners in who's going to support me when I launch a fashion line, which by the way, I'm not, I'm going to wear like sweatshirts and t-shirts every day. But <laughs> if I were to do that, my listeners would be so excited and moving with me through the journey because I'm not showing up when I have it all figured out. That's like the absolute opposite of what I do. I am showing up when I have no clue what I'm doing. And I'm saying, come with me, let's figure this out together. I might just be one step ahead of you, but I'm going to share the good, the bad, and the ugly of the journey. And you're invited to come with me. And I think that's so powerful. And it's something that we don't get enough of these days because everyone is so focused on perfect and polished that we've lost that like vulnerability of being a beginner again. Did you go change the first 10, 10 episodes or could could I actually Oh, hear... you could go back. If you want to hear and, my and phone you're hear voice. you're imperfections. Yes. If you want to hear my phone voice, it doesn't even sound like me. I mean, literally, has anyone ever recorded their voicemail and then you play it back and you're like, do I really sound like that? And then you record it again with like a higher pitch and like a little bit more smile in your voice. And then you're like, no, do I really sound like that? And I, that's exactly how I sound in the first 10 episodes. And you know what I want to say, Pete? And this is something that I, I want to push on other leaders is that we are so prone to say that our early work is cringeworthy, right? Like so many of us are like, oh, I want to say I am so dang proud of my early work. It has evolved. I have grown and I'm proud that I decided to show up when I didn't know what it was going to be like, what was next or anything like that. And so go back and listen to a young me who was willing to show up and try because I'm very proud of that person. Yeah, it's not that it's cringeworthy. It actually defines somebody who decided to get started. Yeah. That's what it is. Like, yeah. I'm just going to tell you, you go watch anybody's first video, anybody's first podcast, anybody's first whatever, and it's not going to be great, but it yeah. is great because they got started. They got yeah. started. Jenna, what, what, like, uh, I'm curious, how many of you know, like, if you knew, because I, I might not have known this, maybe this is one of the things that got in the way, and I want to know in the chat. Like if you, how many are like, I want to go start a podcast in the next 30 days, put 30 days, like drop 30 days for our live show listeners. For those of you that are, are, are listening, make sure that you just say, yeah, I want to go launch one in 30 days because I heard that keyword from Jenna. I went and did it in the next 30 days. That's possible with this, with all things you want to go try to build some complex funnel. Sorry. It's not like it's going to take some work to do that in the next 30 days. You want to go build an email. Like it's going to take some work, not as much work. But a podcast, like Jenna's made it sound like you can make this happen fast. And I actually believe that. I yeah. just wasn't making the decision to get started, which was for whatever reasons. For those of you that want to get started, what do you already know what your big idea is that you would want to talk about? If you do, drop that in the comments. Jenna, how do that's the first thing that's popping up for me is how do people begin to get clear on the idea of what their podcast should be about? Yeah. So one of the things that I would just say is again, start with this idea of the first 10 episodes. You don't have to know what 20, 30 or a hundred beyond is going to look like, but think about what are the things that if Pete shoved you up on stage today and you had to give a presentation on for 20 minutes straight without any notes, without any research, what would you speak about? And that is a really good inclination of kind of like what category you want to be in. But one thing that I think people get really worried about or anxious about is that there are different categories of podcasting, right? There's business, there's art, there's news, there's true crime. There's like so many different things, but my show is the number one marketing show. And I talk about motherhood. I've spoken about miscarriage. I've talked about balance. I've talked about moving. I've talked about so many different things within that, that still share my life. And so if you are starting to think about that, one of the things that I love to do, and Pete, you and I are so much alike. The other day, Pete was voice memoing me and I was like, you're speaking my love language as a busy mom. I was like making noodles while I was listening to Pete's voice memo. And I was like, this is the only way I can consume content these days. Like, don't call me because I'm not going to be able to answer. There's children at my feet. Um, but start recording voice memos of you just talking about something you love. Um, it could be wow. three minutes. It could be 15 minutes and just start to get comfortable using your voice in that way. It's really funny, but all of my friends that I'm really close with, we all have podcasts and we send each other voice memos. And that's how we communicate with our voice. We get stronger with our voice when we use it. 
And so start to kind of, when something spurs up, when something bubbles over, when you get an idea or you have an inclination or you see an injustice or you feel that like spark of creativity, open up your voice memo app and just start talking and listen back to yourself and think of like, wow, what was the nugget there? Like, what is that thing that really could inspire someone? Or what is something that I want to go deeper on? Or what is a story that I want to tell? And you're going to be so surprised at how many things you do have to say and how great it feels to use your story in a way that isn't just for you. That is a way to serve other people, inspire other people, make people feel less alone, make people feel more enough. Like it's just so powerful. So I would say think through, like, imagine with me, if you were to have 10 episodes, where would you want it to go? Who would you want to talk to? What would you want to cover on those? And really think about like, what in your life are you just excited to share about? Because those are both great starting places. I love that. I love that. A, a couple, couple more questions. This is so good. And I'm curious, is there any questions that come up for you as you're listening right now? Drop them in the chat. Jenna, like who's, I, I think the imposter syndrome begins to hit home. For me, it did. And for other people, like who's going to listen to me? And how am I even going to get people to listen to me? I know you had to been feeling that. And now you're a hundred million downloads in a hundred million, everybody like that blows my mind away. Like, what, what would you say to that? Like, is it hard to get people to actually listen to you? Like, I want to break that imposter syndrome for folks today. Yeah. So here's something I want to share. And this is truly, truly the reason why I started my podcast is because I didn't have to show my face. How many of you are like, Hey, I love this digital space, but like, I am not going to go on Instagram live. I do not feel comfortable on video. Like I don't want to wear real clothes or a bra every day. Like how feel that way. Like that is me. And I started my podcast in my car and I graduated to a spare closet. So when I hit hundred million downloads, I was recording the gold digger podcast out of a spare closet. And it wasn't a decked out studio closet. It was the spare closet with a box that said like random junk that had been there for three years that no one was ever going to open. And so I loved podcasting because I had camera off voice on. And that's all I had to do. And what I think is so beautiful about podcasting is for so many of us who want polish, who want perfection, who want things to look nice. We don't have to focus on how they look. We get to focus on how they feel. And I think that shifts the energy of everything because you're not worried about oh my gosh, are, am I using my hands too much? Or does my face look funny? Or is my lipstick crooked? Like you're not thinking of those things. You're thinking, how am I making people feel? As they tune in, what do they hear? And so when I started my show, literally up until this year, we didn't record a single video with it. It was audio only because that was the only way I could show up as a busy mom chasing kids around. And so I love that it's so accessible for people who are maybe afraid to inch their toe into the digital space because they're like, I don't want to record dancing videos on TikTok. I don't want to have to put lipstick on in order to show up. I get to just speak and people get to hear my voice. Dr. Armanda Pinkins, I freaking love you. And you are just the best to watch right now. Okay. She's amazing. She's like my woo girl. Yeah. I love it. She's got great energy. She's got she great really energy. Does. And so it just start like, does it just start organically getting out there, Jenna? Like, is that what happens or is there strategies to get people to actually listen or? Yeah. Or? Okay, great. Thanks for bringing me back in. Um, no, but so what you said was what, huge. People needed to hear that. It was huge. This is why I'm a podcaster because I can just go on and on and on. I have no problem. So with podcasting, there are a lot of different ways for people to actually download it. So if you do have an existing platform, of course, you would be leveraging that to get your guests, but podcasting is also a platform that is keyword sensitive. So this is why I love podcasting and Pinterest. They're almost like search engines in a way. And so if you are strategic in what you call your show, in the description of your show, in the titles of your episodes, if people are typing in a subject matter, they can find an episode of yours from five years ago, right? Like I have episodes that are still working for me that I recorded years ago. That is still solid content. And so keyword searchability is incredible with podcasting and it means means that you don't have to have this massive audience to start gaining traction. Now, the other thing that I love about podcasting is that podcast listeners listen to podcasts with an S. 
They don't just listen to one business podcast. They listen to five. They don't just listen to one true crime podcast. They listen to four. And so it doesn't feel like this competitive space. It feels like this community. And so when you start getting on other people's shows and doing things like podcast swaps, you are exposed to their audience. They are exposed to your audience. You're sharing listeners and listeners are subscribed to multiple shows. Studies show that a podcast listener doesn't just listen to one show, they listen to many. And so you get to build out this library of listeners who are excited. And so there are so many different ways. If you have guests on your show, you get access to their platforms as they share your episode, because guess what? You're going to be the best host ever. And they're going to be so excited to tell people like, Hey, Pete gave me this opportunity to share my story that no one's ever given me. Or Jenna saw me in a way that like no one's ever seen me go listen to this episode because you've given them this platform. And so there are so many different ways that you can grow your podcast. And it's not reliant on you having this massive existing audience. When I started my podcast, I think I maybe had 10,000 followers on Instagram. And so it wasn't like I had this like readily made audience who was just jumping on. It grew over time and with strategy. Guys, she just gave you golden stuff that is not like marketing, this hard marketing. It's like 101 stuff. Like, that's what I heard. I'm like, man, I wished I would have heard that four years ago because I just came to mind. Like, like as soon as I interviewed Amy, Amy went and told you, but she told a couple of other people that she had an incredible experience. And so therefore now it's like even more guests want to be on. And like, I have people hitting me up and like, and it, and it changes things when that begins to happen too, Jenna. Like, so I'm like, yeah. wow. And then, and then, hey, here's a, here's a test question around her strategy. How many of you have already went today and downloaded or went and looked at Gold Digger to go start listening to that? Put Gold Digger in the comments if you've already like went to go do that. Like how many, I did just now, I did just now. How many of you, I've heard a lot of you asking that, like, and so now all of a sudden she's got dozens or hundreds of new listeners from being on somebody else's show for 30 or 40 minutes. And so like, I didn't, those are such simple things for all of you to hear. And I just, I really want to, I really want to encourage you guys because I waited too long. The reason I'm focusing on this one, and I can see that the number two thing you guys want to learn about is email. So I promise you, I will get that scheduled with Jenna in the future, in the next several months but I wanted you to be focused on podcasting today because it is the number one focus that we have in the digital space with our community right now because I waited too long and then I realized I didn't because it's like not even scratching the surface of podcast in comparison to other noise out there. And so Jenna, kind of, I'm stoked. I, I, before you kind of give, I want to encourage you. So how many of you are committed to launching a podcast? Like you're, you're committed to launching a podcast. Like I asked you that earlier. I want to encourage all of you listening right now, live, or if you're listening to this podcast, we'll have something up, but I want to encourage you. Jenna is doing podcasting 101, a training that I'm excited about about the three easy steps. I love three, by the way. It's so much easier than five. The three easy steps to launching your podcast. She's doing that. And I want you guys to be a part of that, to go and listen to this because her trainings, I'm going to tell you this about Jenna. Every training I've been on hers, I can't say this about many people, so much value. It's why her community and her people trust her so much. And so I want you guys to go to jennacutcher.com forward slash Pete, jennacutcher.com forward slash Pete, because Jenna's going to tell me in, a, in 30 or 60 days, some of my community who launched the podcast. And for those of you that actually go take that seriously, here is my give back to you. I'll have you on my podcast. I'll have you on my podcast as someone who took action and launched their idea into the market. And I'll highlight you and honor you as one of those people who didn't sit on the sidelines, but actually got into the arena and had their voices heard. So make sure you go to jennacutcher.com forward slash Pete. This is 
me like this this is not an affiliate launch this is me i was just gonna say <laughs> her i yeah. believe in her this is not anything affiliate i believe so much in jenna that i'm like jenna i want and i believe in podcasting and mm -hmm. and and so jenna what would your encouragement to people be around at training you can speak to yeah. that but just in podcasting bringing it full circle today because i know you have another stage to be on in a little bit yeah well, just thank you first, Pete, because Pete has just been so supportive as a friend. And I was laughing the other day because Kim was texting me about paint colors and Pete was texting me about business. And I was getting back to Kim first about paint colors <laughs> than I was about Pete in business. That is our relationship with the Vargas's. Um, but I'm so excited for next week. So I have not done a live training about podcasting in three years. So it is long overdue that I'm doing this. Um, and I have over 10,000 students that have launched a podcast. So like, I am super proud of my community of just like, they go from listeners to launching their own show. And I just, I love it. So I'm going to help you walk away, making some of those decisions that feel daunting, that you're worried about making the wrong ones so that you walk away with a plan of like, okay, this is how it's going to look. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to record it. So I'm going to walk through the tech of like, okay, what do you actually need to start it? how to make those early decisions. And then I'm going to talk about monetization strategies. So some of the things that I wish I would have known at the very beginning that can drive massive results, even from episode one, if you set it up strategically and thoughtfully from the beginning, and I did not do that. And so I want to save you from making some of the mistakes I made along the way. And so those are the main things. So the main decisions you have to make, the tech and how to do it, and then what I wish I would have done when it came to monetization from day one, that's what we're going to cover in those three easy steps. It's going to be about an hour long, and then we're doing Q and A. And again, it's going to be live. And I'm very excited to bring this to you because it's been a long time coming. God, three years, guys. Like, don't go wait another three years. <laughs> another number she just, just humbly drops. I've had 10,000 people launch podcasts. Like guys, that shows success of getting results. I said that at the very beginning, Jenna, one of the reasons that she has a movement is not just because she sought before others, not just because she took action, but because of the fact that people get life-changing results. A movement, the biggest thing I took away from John Maxwell yesterday is a movement is, a, is not a movement if you're not getting people life-changing results. And she's doing that in this domain, in many domains, but in this domain of podcasting, and I'm telling you, I'm going to be on the training listening to it. How many are you going to be on that training next week? Like how many are like, I am there. I am on. You can count on it. I'm super excited about it. And I'm telling you, I more importantly, don't be on the training. Actually go launch your podcast before this year is done. Before this year is done. Who's saying before, before the year, like, let me know that you're committed before the year. Uh, Jenna, any, any final thoughts? Cause I, I have a, I have a little story that I'm going to close with, and then we might just take a couple of questions, but any final thoughts that you have? And thank you. We're going to get you booked for email because this yes. has been amazing today. So, but yeah. any thoughts that you have? I would just say that there's so much power in your voice. And I know that there's a lot of people on here who are like, good for you, but who am I? And I just want to challenge that so deeply. You know, I've thought that at so many points in my life, who am I? I'm just a small town girl. Who am I? I'm just a wedding photographer, but you're not just anything. And there's so much power as you start to learn how to use your voice and invite people into your life. It really is a legacy play. It's something that my children will get to listen to long after I'm gone. And I just feel like it's so powerful that as you build, you're serving and you're bringing people with you. And you also get to see your transformation in such a beautiful way. So if not for others, do it for yourself so that you can document your story, your journey, your voice along the way. And I think that is powerful reason enough to just simply begin. And I think the rest will unfold so beautifully for you that you're going to wonder why did I wait so long to start? I love it, guys. One of the things that I fight for is, is, is I fight for voices to be heard. Like I really, really do. I fight for them. When, when, when God puts people in my path, I will be the biggest advocate and champion. And, and sometimes to the point of people are like, that's, that's not like, what is it? Why? It's just because more voices need to be heard. And one of the greatest lessons that I've learned from Grant Cardone, I'm so grateful because of who, who, who he is behind the scenes to his wife and to his kids. It's to me, one of the most beautiful things that I get to watch. And he, 
he told me that he made a decision early on with his kids, his two young girls, to, he told their tutors, she was stressing out about like her homeschool. They were stressing about, about math and science and whatever. And he said, listen, the most important thing that I want you to train my girls how to do is to be able to communicate and for their voices to be heard. He said, too many parents shush us when we're little kids and we wonder why we're muted and we don't let, we don't let our voices be heard because there's this subconscious of shh, be quiet, shut up, shh, be quiet, shut up. And to me, that's not okay. Like it's been so convicting to me that I actually catch myself with my kids not doing that. Like I, oh crud, I just said shh, like, and I, and I'm doing it so far less. Why do I say that to you? Because one of the greatest ways for your voices to be heard is from podcasting. And it's one of the least threatening ways. Like first time I got on Grant stage, I was sweating everywhere. My wife dressed me and she dressed me in this sweater. She had no idea I was going to sweat that much because I was so flipping nervous or on this stage or on that stage. I've never really been that nervous with being on a podcasting stage. It's such a powerful way for all of you to get your stories out, your messages out. And I'm stoked because this person right here is one of the best, if not the best out there in helping people do that. So Jenna, thank you for today. I really want to encourage you guys go to jennacutcher.com forward slash Pete. And I'm serious for those of you that actually, and Jenna can get me some details on some things. I'll work that out with Jenna. You go launch your podcast. And you are going to be one of the ones that are eligible for me to highlight you as somebody that took action yeah. on here. So Jenna, thanks for being with us. It won't be the only time. So no, I got I'll you be saying back. that publicly. So <laughs> I will be back on the record to teach you anything I know and bring you on the journey. So thank you so much for having me, Pete. Yeah, guys, give Jenna some love, everybody. Give Jenna some love. And I cannot wait to see you back here next week with Backstage with PV3. Have an incredible week and we will see you soon.